Okay, I'm going to hope that everyone can hear me okay. Um, so first off, uh, I would just like to welcome everybody to the 12th annual boot camp for science writers. My name is James Berger. I'm the director of the Institute for Basic Biomedical Sciences here at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. And I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, it's not the press club, I am, my apologies, um, but uh, we, we do the best we can in the times that we have. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my uh, screen at this point to get us started. So let's do that up. Um, okay, I'm hoping that everyone can see that. All right, and I will go ahead and start the slideshow. All right. Well, again, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, so as many of you know, we sponsor this annual event for journalists and science writers. Uh, this is our, this year we're going to be focusing on precision medicine. Uh, and this is a, an area that's acutely important for human health and well-being, uh, including in the COVID-19 crisis that we currently find ourselves in, as well as future such challenges that will undoubtedly arise. So to get us started, what I thought I would do is I would give just a brief introduction to the topic, precision medicine. Uh, and before I do that, I would like to first start off just by uh, explaining a little bit about what the Institute for Basic Biomedical Sciences is, uh, or IBBS as we sometimes call it. So the IBBS is basically a collective of nine basic science departments housed within the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. We have approximately 150 primary faculty in the Institute. Uh, and we have a range of departments, as you can see uh, on the screen here, that go from uh, studying biophysics and biochemistry to the studies of genetics and cell biology and bioengineering, neuroscience, et cetera. It's a quite diverse group. Uh, and one of the strengths of the IBBS is that it lets us go all the way from the study of individual atoms and molecules to the study of cells, to tissues, to organs and finally organisms. And so we can really put together a, a very uh, broad uh, swath of research uh, talents together on challenging biomedical problems. Now within the IBBS, we are home to approximately half of the PhD candidates here at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. Uh, and our basic sciences faculty are charged with teaching nearly all of the fundamental preclinical courses for School of Medicine medical students. Our primary mission is really to uncover basic science concepts that will allow us to drive clinical advances. So we are very much a foundational enterprise, uh, but at the same time, by being embedded within the School of Medicine, we're quite tied and acutely aware of human health uh, needs. Now the purpose of boot camp um, are many fold. One is it's to give you a chance to spend a day of learning with our experts on, again, the topic that, that we cho choose at any given year. Um, we can drill down into the knowns and unknowns of a particular health topic. Again, today is going to be focused on precision medicine. And one of the reasons we feel this uh, particular um, uh, get together is really quite important is because we understand that your role as science writers and journalists is quite vital to our discourse and well-being uh, here in the, in the U.S. It's you and your cohort that allow uh, the general population to distinguish science fact from science fiction. Uh, we rely on you to help counteract the disinvestment that we've been seeing uh, increasingly in the sciences over the years. Uh, we rely on you to educate the populace. Uh, I think most of you uh, have, have, are aware that sometimes scientists aren't always the best at communicating uh, their discoveries to the general pub public and uh, we really need your help in helping us uh, achieve this goal. Uh, and this is also important so that we can inform public policy and we can allow public policy makers to have work from sound, fact-driven decisions uh, and not from, um, from, uh, from basically uh, their, their gut, if you will. Okay, so what is precision medicine? So precision medicine, really, the goal is for a given individual to understand how a particular disease arises in that individual, predict the disease course, and tailor the, a particular remedy for that disease. Now, there's many variables 
um, that of course go into how an individual might respond to either a disease or a treatment. Uh, there can be variables such as pre-existing conditions, demographics, social determinants. Um, so these might be something more environmental, for instance. But then there can also be uh, what we sometimes refer to as somewhat hardwired uh, variables, which might be your genetics, uh, the state of your proteome or metabolome. You might have heard of things like the epigenome, et cetera. So these are all a whole host of different classes of variables that really uh, determine how an individual will respond to a particular type of disease and also to its treatment. And the reason that we get ill, the reason we have health problems is because our normal uh, equilibrium, if you will, of all these sort of confluent factors uh, somehow get thrown into disarray. And it can be by a pathogen, uh, such as we're experiencing during this COVID crisis. It can be by an acute injury. Uh, it can be by um, poisoning from external sources, all different kinds of, of, of things can go into perturbing that disequilibrium that they can give rise to the, to the illness. Now you might wonder how precision medicine relates to traditional medicine. Uh, and when we typically think of medicine uh, and how we, we treat it, uh, usually you have some type of disease. Uh, that disease gets studied in some way, and uh, this is where science comes in. We try to figure out what's the underlying root cause of the disease. We try to figure out how we might counteract um, the, 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 the symptoms that are brought on by the disease. Um, that leads to some kind of treatment, um, often in the form of a pharmaceutic, although not always. Uh, and then, of course, this is then applied to the population that happens to have that disease. The goal of precision medicine is to frankly tailor this in a more uh, precise way so that instead of just having one treatment or a one size fits all for a population, you would have an individual that has a particular disease uh, and aspects of that individual, again, their genetics, their proteome, um, their environment, et cetera, feed back into the science so that science can help uh, clinicians basically formulate a treatment which is really, again, tailored to that individual. Um, and so it has a higher efficacy or a highly, higher likelihood of being efficacious or, or working down the road. Of course, one individual is different from another individual, so the next individual will have different characteristics and so will require slightly different treatments. Uh, and then the third individual will require yet something different again and so on and so forth. Right. And this is why science and research um, are not just central to this process, but even more central than in the in traditional disease models, because we really have to get a good picture, a good view of what an individual's snapshot, if you will, or state looks like before we can start to think about how we might develop particular treatments. And I think the current crisis we're going through right now with COVID-19 really exemplifies where we would like precision medicine to go. And I think you've all read or in, been involved indeed in writing uh, various stories such as the following. You might have a shared household with a number of individuals. We'll just say this four COVID positive individuals here. Um, so they all have tested positive for COVID. They all have been infected by, by SARS-CoV-2. Um, but two of these individuals might be totally asymptomatic and have no clue that or that they're really even infected. Uh, one might come down with some severe rash or some sort of external symptom that's uncomfortable but not necessarily life-threatening. And the fourth might actually end up in the hospital uh, on a ventilator system because of how they responded, right? And the question we want to know, and indeed right now, there's um, a number of scientists trying to sort this out, is why? Why is there so many differences why are there so many differences in how individuals respond to this one virus? Uh, and this really is where we have to have science to help bring us in and understand um, what the, not just what the virus does and how it does it, but why humans respond the way they do and why one particular treatment might work well in one individual but not work so well in a different individual. Okay, so with that, I'll stop the uh, slideshow. Um, and uh, I just wanna uh, come back. So we have a great lineup to, for today. Um, you're going to hear from basic and clinical scientists who have integrated precision medicine efforts into their research. Uh, we will start with research ranging from AI or artificial intelligence and imaging uh, and implantable biosensors, the body's um, uh, 
uh, immune system, designing therapies for childhood cancer, uh, et cetera. And except for our first presenter, most of the speakers today will, have, will be giving presentations of about 10 minutes and you'll have the opportunity to ask them questions throughout the Q&A feature of Zoom in the remaining five minutes of your time slots.